Do not disturb. So what, what drove this new version is, I would say, a lot of push and pull. Obviously, we've had our first product generation, first and second product generation, which were both kind of cased and housed in the same plastics, um, in the same enclosure. We've learned a lot from this product. We've learned a lot of what can go wrong when these devices are out in the field and, and sustaining salt water for the longest time. And we've learned a lot what it takes to process data as accurately as we can. And obviously technology has evolved over the couple of years that we've been on the market now. So we've taken that feedback and rolled that into 3.0. On the flip side of things, we wanted to build a technology platform with 3.0 that would allow us to do things in the future that we weren't going to be able to do with 1.0 or 2.0. So there's lots of lots of hardware improvements on the side as well, on the electronic side, the sensor is new, the processor is new. So that all sets us up to, to, to continue to work and build new features into our platform. So this is Wu 3.0. Um, it comes standard with a, what we used to call freak and fly mount, but this is now the standard mount for Wu 3.0. Obviously a complete new color scheme. Uh, shape is very similar to Wu 2.0, but again, it's a very, or brand new uh, design, brand new way on how we built these units. A lot of the work has been put in and just making this thing even more rugged than 2.0 was. It comes with that case, um, we call that triple waterproofing. So we have the case here. Um, secondly, we have a seal gasket that runs around the edge of uh, the two components that made here. And lastly, we put an extra layer of epoxy on there. So it's three kind of layers of waterproofing where traditionally we, we relied on one. So we really wanted to make sure that no one has a bad experience out in the field and, and the unit would last through anything and everything. There used to be four pins on the Wu, two for charging and two for USB communications. Um, with that new device, we're able to do all of the work that we need to do with the device via Bluetooth. So there's no longer a need for us to connect uh, through that USB serial connection. So we reduced the amount of pins to two to simplify that design as well and, and take out any kind of source of error or corrosion or whatever it might be. We've also worked a lot on small details, the tactile feedback that you feel when you press that button. It's like now a really crisp and kind of loud click, which makes it much easier to you know, kind of feel if you hit the button or not. The LED is much brighter, so you'll see um, even better than before in, in heavy sunlight and, and, and all that if the unit is recording or not. So lots of lots of small improvement and there's a long, long list of things that went into it. But we just wanted to make sure that we take anything and everything we've learned over the past three years and roll it into this design, while again also setting ourselves up to build new and exciting features in the future. I would say two main things that I'm mostly um, excited about with Wu 3.0. One, of course, is this. Have you seen Black Panther? Uh, no, it's, uh, <laughs> Wu's now integrate with um, both Android and iOS watches to live transmit jump height and kiteboarding to the watch so you can see the results as you're kiting out there. That's a feature that I think probably was the most asked one from our consumer base um, over the past year or two and something that we wanted to implement the right way. So it's, it's you know, not distractive, it's not taken away from your kiting experience, it's not going to be a safety hazard, and your attention isn't drawn too far away from, from where it should be. So you can quickly flip the, the watch up and, and check your results. That's one headline feature. The other piece, of course, is the app itself. The Wu 3.0 app that will release just about um, at the end of March and early April when we, when we are shipping the first 3.0 units has what I would classify as a complete new section of game features built into it. In the past, Wu has been mostly built and driven for people who could compete with others in the world, um, be it on a global leaderboard, be it on a local leaderboard, be it in a hashtag leaderboard that you have within your own group or team, but it was always that type of multiplayer game where you compete against others. With 3.0, we really heavily focused our efforts on building a more what we call single player game where you can set yourself challenges and there's and there's badges um, out there, little achievements that you can kind of take off and, and work on. So you have a purpose um, as you go out to a session. To, to name an example for Kite Bigger, there's going to be a badge that's the X4X badge. Um, I don't think we have an official name for it yet, but it's kind of how it's going, going to work. So can you do three jumps over three meter in one session? Five over five, seven over seven. 9 over 9, 10 over 10, 11 over 11. And that obviously becomes progressively hard. And, and I think just for myself, I, it'd be a huge challenge to say, shoot, can I do like even 10 jumps over 10 meters in one session? I think it requires quite some effort, right? And those are the kind of things that we want to bring to our user base. Um, also to make it more interesting and just enticing for people who are not 
uh, you know, who are not yet jumping 15 meter or even 10 meter, right? They have something to work on, something to progress on, and something to kind of play the game with Wu and, and play more. Um, another piece that kind of ties into this single player mode is heavily geared towards the freestyle world. Um, we've developed this in conjunction for kiteboarding freestyle, wakeboarding, um, snowboarding freestyle and free skiing uh, is a trictionary. So we have a list of tricks where you can see, look, these are the kind of things I can do on a kiteboard. And this is obviously something where I will be um, very motivated to go out and, and prove to the world that I'm not just a one dimensional, you know, boosting kind of guy, but I can do the occasional freestyle trick. It doesn't look pretty or anything, but, you know, I can get that score up a little bit as well. And that's something that, you know, I personally will focus on it heavily as the spring comes around is to fill out that trictionary and, and check off a couple of those tricks. And I'm, I think I'm quite motivated to also um, become a little bit more, or let's say less one dimensional, because usually I do all my tricks to the left side and that, um, that flaw will definitely be exposed um, through that new app. That's available for anyone with the Woo 2.0, 3.0. Um, however, there's going to be features that will release over time, smartwatch integration being the, the first of them. Um, that are based on the new Wu 3.0 hardware platform. Um, a good way to look at it is that with Wu 3.0, you kind of buy the new generation of PlayStation. And even though in the current moment, you kind of have the same games on the PlayStation 2 and the PlayStation 3, there will be new games releasing that will only be and exclusively be available on the PlayStation 3. So this is a good time to kind of upgrade and, and get yourself um, on the latest hardware. We have brand new technology in this device. There's a new processor in there, there's a new sensor in there, and these two things allow us to do much, much more. So, so for those of you who've been, you know, kiteboarding for a long time and have been kind of considering, should I get a Wu, should I, should I not get a Wu? Um, part of that is, or part of our effort is to push out a, a 3.0 proper pre-order campaign. And you can think of it a little bit like Kickstarter, even though we're not in the world where we say, oh, we still have to manufacture it. That's all set. But we're doing a pre-order campaign where you can get the Wu 3.0 to a heavily discounted price. Of course, it's staged, so there will be um, a price very early on, but that's only for a few units and it'll kind of grow as we go. But um, we made it in a way that is a very attractive offer and a very good deal for those who were kind of on the fence or even considering in general to kind of get get a little bit more amped about the kiteboarding, add a little bit more excitement to it. And, and that's really what we're trying to do is grow this community even quicker. So there's more players in the game and, and it gets more and more exciting quickly. So obviously the way this video came about is that I ran around the office, asked Kevin, asked Alex, asked Jordan, asked Tyler, asked Arlen, asked Eric, what are the kind of questions you've gotten from everyone? And obviously I went through the comments on Facebook and, and tried to filter out and get a vibe for what are the kind of the pressing points. So, so this was you know meant to be a Q&A section. Um, I would expect and hopefully there will be many more questions to this video. Feel free to just plug them into the comments. It will be posted on Facebook. Well, Jordan keeps, keeps being super excited about something. We all don't know what it is. It's probably a Chipotle burrito. To be honest. <laughs> peace? Or is it peace? Actually, I need peace. <laughs>